Joshua here, MVA Studio, Minneapolis, overlooking the Mississippi River as it dethaws big time. I picked kind of a busier spot to record this, so hopefully the cars aren't too obtrusive. So on our website, we have four methods for how we might approach a project. Uh, there's the conventional design method, which we're calling the conceptor, and then there's the typographer, the producer, and the remixer. And I think I'm gonna do a, a series of kind of short videos of what those methods entail and how they combat certain aspects of the traditional design process that are um, a pain in the butt. So let's start with the typographer. This project has its roots in a school assignment by Jan Jancourt of MCAD. In that assignment, you have some kind of content and you do a lot of versions of what he would call a dynamic modernist typographic composition. And then once you had the kind of, the one that was really great and the kind of finished masterpiece, you would do this collage where you reinterpret the typography. You do a whole bunch of those and then you'd synthesize those two pieces together to make this kind of type collage layout that probably has uh, some relevance to say the work of Willie Kunz. That's the spirit of it. I strip away the modernist aspect of it. I strip away the reinterpreting the typographic structure. And what I'm interested in is exploring typography and rapid iteration. So in our version of that, we start with type only layouts and they're worked on very fast. They're non-conceptual and we try to do as many as possible. And essentially what we do is treat the content as a kind of material to be explored. Like what do these letters and these words and these arrangements want to do? It just depends. But if I were working on it for say a couple hours, I might have 20 to 40 versions, maybe more. And we'd work on that for a predetermined amount of time. The next stage is called visual anchors. This is heavily inspired by Swiss typography, Armin Hoffman, Rosemary Tissy, these different designers that would find some element of the text and pull it out and make a, a central graphic based on it. Again, I, I pull out the Swiss part of it. That part doesn't really matter. Instead, what it's about is finding stuff in the text and then exploring that. So we do the same thing. So it could be the dates, it could be the initials, it could be the city, it could be just the name of an artist. But we pull a bunch of that content out and explore that by itself, um, essentially as a kind of logo or typographic composition. Uh, if you look at the typographer method page, you'll see this Ken Vandermark poster. The 1819 that's in the background, that's the typographic anchor on that piece. And then image making. And image making is either based on the content, based on associations, based on gut instinct to explore or gather photography, textures, color, but making imagery that's sort of based on free associations with the project, with the content. All of these things last this predetermined amount of time. And then we take that stuff as essentially raw assets to work with, and then we start to combine it all back together again. One of the things I like about it is it's entirely based on working quickly and non-conceptually. And it was a thing I was doing already, but that Ken Vandermark poster is actually one of the one where I realized that this had more legs than I realized because I designed two versions of that during a seven hour class I was teaching while projecting the work and running through the process. And I kind of realized if I can make something this good while teaching other people, taking a lunch break, answering questions, imagine what happens if I can focus on the process. How does this address problems within the traditional design process? 
it addresses the speed issue. If you wanted a poster and you could only give me two days, I can run through my um, bed no diagram process that's normally part of the conceptor or conceptor and I could probably come up with something but it'd be very stressful and the reality is I'd still need another couple days for execution after the research analysis ideation sketching process with the typographer method we can simply take whatever time we have chop it up into the relevant pieces if the timeline's brutally short like if you need something in three hours we can simply split up and I can do typographic studies and Kim can research color and maybe pull images that work with it or if you're looking at our work and you're like oh I really like that stuff with the abstract photos well we can pull a bunch of abstract photos and then start doing the type only stuff right on top of it so we can cut the time frame way down because we're not trying to come up with an idea that's where all the time is gone because we're not trying to come up with an idea we don't need time to gestate we don't need time to research we don't need that space between things we can just start working because we're treating the content as the material that's what that addresses now it does a couple other things why is this important our kind of core needs on doing a project is we need to be able to work in a funnel a lot of stuff at the top one thing at the bottom so in the traditional design method that means an unbelievable ton of research slough some stuff off after doing some analysis from the analysis you slough some stuff off going into ideation from ideation you slough some off going into sketching so on and so forth With this the way that it works is the ton of stuff at the top is the typographic studies the visual anchor studies the image making the combination of them starts to slough some stuff off then once we review that combination that's going to trim some stuff off then once we send you the work you're going to pick something hopefully and that's going to edit down so that's how we get to our quantity over quality giant funnel of creative work that's um that's how that works and that's why for us it's a relevant process because it hits those two points and we need those two points to both be fully engaged and to do good work now what i think is cool and why i would look forward to this is because just because this process can be done quickly doesn't mean that it can't be a real project it doesn't mean that we can't stretch it out for example I just taught a class last semester using that method 15 week class and we spent nine weeks on that method which meant that these students generated a ton of work and over time from generating that ton of work they also developed concepts the concepts emerged maybe out of the formal studies so you're doing something you realize like hey this actually looks like this you bump that up um it's a very rich process and i think it's going to have a lot of legs for doing other stuff for example you could do a process like that to I design an identity system kind of quickly or maybe not quickly and then just extract pieces from it uh, I hope as a designer, if you're not familiar with a method like this, I hope it's interesting. And if you're coming at this from the client side, hopefully it makes sense how it addresses some of the issues that are inherent in the traditional design process, which one of the core needs or features of it is it needs time to spread out. All right, thanks a lot for watching. If you have any more questions about this method, leave them in the comments.